Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to another episode of MC Commute where we review motorcycles on the way to the motorcyclist headquarters in Irvine, California. And today's contestant will be none other than the 2021 Honda NC750X that you see here behind me. Now this is Honda's sort of do-it-all, versatile, utilitarian motorcycle um, that honestly doesn't really get as much credit as it should. So I wanna tell you all about this motorcycle. We got a lot to talk about. Let's hit the road. All right, ladies and gentle giants, the 2021 Honda NC750X DCT, otherwise known as the dual clutch transmission. Um, now what that means is that you're gonna basically have an automatic transmission. Um, no clutch lever, no shift lever, less to think about. We'll talk about that as we get on the road. The NC750 is powered by a 745cc single overhead cam 8 valve parallel twin that you can see the cylinders are laid, I believe, at a 55 degree angle. Um, pretty interesting stuff. And now what that is going to do, check this out, what it does here is because the cylinders are laid at an angle, the fuel tank is actually under the seat. Now what that does is it opens up the availability for storage uh, where the fuel tank would go. So, check this out. You get 23 liters of storage, which you can see I stuffed in a Rye Quantum X inside here for uh, my old lady, my old ball and chain. She probably won't appreciate that. Just kidding, she's a wonderful woman. Um, <laughs> anyways, the Honda NC750X, super utilitarian machine, kind of has an adventure-esque look to it. It's actually in Honda's adventure lineup. Um, really neat motorcycle that I'm excited to tell you guys all about when we get on the road here. And excuse my freaking bozo-ness, there's water spots all over it. I got hit by a freaking sprinkler this morning and I blew it. So, I'm a bozo, but I want to give you guys a review, so let's get to it. 745cc parallel twin. Super mellow. Kind of like a tractor, tractor-like. We'll talk about that as we get on the road. Now, we got the DCT transmission. No clutch lever, no shift lever down there. Um, what you're going to do to throw this thing in gear is you're going to click this little D button over here on the right handlebar and now we're in drive and we're off to the motorcyclist headquarters. And we are going to begin with the 745cc parallel twin engine that is used to power this NC750. Now, uh, it, this model used to be an NC700, as you remember. Um, I believe it was 2018 that they increased the bore, gave it a little bit more displacement, and now what you have is the NC750. Uh, very, very torque rich, very easy to use, very versatile, especially for ripping around town. Um, and now it does have grunt when you get up on the freeway, but it's definitely not built for the ripping and the tearing. Here's full stick. As you can see, it does get going just fine, but it is not built for the ripping and the tearing as you might find on a sportier model. And realistically, it has very low RPMs, kind of cruises along. You can see we're doing 2,500 RPM. Now that has to do with the DCT transmission that we're gonna talk about here in a minute, but it kind of just chugs along very, very smoothly, kind of not a ton of personality if I'm being completely honest, but there's something to be said for that. I enjoy the simplicity of it, kind of go anywhere, do anything type of engine. Alrighty, now for that dual clutch transmission, the DCT, 
if you remember that debuted on Honda motorcycles back in 2010 and it's used across a few different models including the Africa Twin, the Goldwing, um, the Rebel 1100 are models that I can think of off the top of my head and basically what that does is you have two, two clutches as you could imagine. Um, one is used for first, third and fifth gear. Uh, the other is used for second fourth and sixth gear and basically all it does is you know takes care of the clutch actuation and operation and the shifting operation for you so you don't have to worry about it no clutch lever no gear shift lever um, now I want to comment there are some models specifically like the Africa twin that I'm not a huge fan of the DCT model um, I like the ability to switch gears, especially if I'm off-road or, or kind of be in control, full control of the shifting actuation. But then there's other models like the Goldwing, and I'm going to say the NC750, um, that if it were me buying this motorcycle, I don't see any chance of me buying the manual transmission, um, the manual transmission variant which are offered in both because of the utilitarian, the ease of use aspect, you can see, stop, and we're off, no clutch lever. Um, the ease of use that makes those models so good, especially speaking about a Goldwing when you're at 850 pounds, it's kind of one less thing for you to think about with the NC750. Uh, you know, it really is a sort of utilitarian motorcycle. When you combine the DCT with the big 23 liter storage, this particular model has hard bags uh, set to or er, set on top of it as well for more storage. You can really use this motorcycle to do errands, to carry a lot of things. You know, professional rider on closed course, not really, but you can throw a bag of groceries on the left handlebar and carry them home. Um, do as I say, not as I do. And the DCT model works very, very, very well, and I'm very impressed. Shifting actuation is very smooth. Now that being said, you can see we're cruising along six gear, maybe 2,700 RPM, uh, just kind of chugging along. Now what you can do over here on the right handlebar switch is shift it over into a manual mode which essentially allows you to use the paddle shifters over on this left handlebar um, to essentially take control of the gearbox on your own which we will do in just one moment fourth gear let's reach over click our manual mode now what that's going to do so now we should be in manual mode and I can downshift using the front switch, third gear, second gear. Uh, and now I can upshift, there's a little switch, toggle switch, not toggle, but little switch up in front of this cluster. Click over here with my left index finger and we're kind of cruising along um, back in sixth gear. Now there's one important thing to note is that when you do ride in manual mode and you do come to a stop maybe a stop sign or a or stoplight whatever it may be traffic stops um, the motorcycle will downshift for you when rpms become too low to sustain uh, but otherwise let's just click it back here or in second gear what about first I can hold it wide open. <laughs> I can hold it wide open and it will not shift. Um, so anyways, it's cool that Honda has incorporated that manual mode. Although, you know, it's kind of a, a flip switch when you get in an automatic car and you have paddle shifters and you want to feel like you're Michael Schumacher or Lewis Hamilton and you start banging through the gears with your paddle shifters. Uh, that's awesome. But on the motorcycle, Quite honestly, I don't really find the need or find the th same thrill uh, as I might in a car or find the same thrill as I do ripping through the gearbox using the toe shifter of a traditional style six-speed gearbox.
All right, DCT out of the way. Whew. Uh, the only last thing that I can really comment on that in terms of specs, in terms of the hard facts about it, um, would be that Honda offers this NC750 with a manual transmission for $84.99 in 2021, um, and the DCT model will be $800 more at $9299. Still a relative bargain, um, I would say, and we'll talk about that more as we continue on our way, but you can get that DCT transmission for $800 more uh, than the manual. Another thing that lends itself to the utilitarian aspect of this NC750 is its ergonomics. It's very comfortable uh, ergonomics. You have a relatively low 31.6 inch seat height, which um, honestly fits my 5 foot 7 inch stature quite well. I don't want to say I can flat foot on both sides, but I definitely get away with uh, good contact at the ground which makes navigating the low speed scenarios that much more comfortable despite this motorcycle in the DCT model with its 3.8 gallon fuel tank um, weighing 493 pounds. Man, the specs you have on your head when you shoot an MC commute. Wild. Hauling butt. Automatic. So, good ergonomics package. Uh, very comfortable big wide one piece handlebar offers a very comfortable relaxed reach to the grips um, if there's one thing I have to comment on is it's a relatively tight leg room seat to peg distance uh, on the NC 750 again back with my five inch five five inch five foot seven inch stature um it even becomes a little bit cramped for me especially if i kind of ride up on the balls of my feet like i like to it does become a little bit cramped taller riders will probably find that to be even more of an issue um but that i think that also has to do with honda trying to make it a low seat height so it's a give and take Overall, it is a very neutral handling chassis despite that big heavy weight of nearly 500 pounds. Super stable, uh, which is most likely, I mean, it is credit to a long wheelbase, a 60 inch uh, wheelbase, but it still happens to turn quite well um, and with good contact at the tires and the contact patches cruising along all right yellow light let's get on the brakes brake 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 so the honda nc750 is brought to a halt via a single caliper up front clamping to a 320 millimeter disc for a motorcycle weighing nearly 500 pounds that's a little i don't know worrying you would think that maybe they would fit two calipers to this bike but I have to say that the braking performance has actually, I don't want to say surprised me, but it is definitely adequate to bring this thing to a halt. Um, if there is one little minor gripe is just that the amount of feel presented through the brake lever could be improved, but maybe upgrading to an aftermarket pad may do that for you. The NC750 is the first non-Harley Davidson motorcycle I believe that I have experience with utilizing the Showa dual bending valve uh, technology front end um, used to act as suspension and quite honestly I was I, I thought I was impressed like I thought it actually did a very good job kind of soaking up the ripples uh, kind of taking care of the big hit support but in a way I almost feel like the damping and maybe the spring rate is a little bit soft um, and kind of blows through the stroke and kind of chat kind of causes the motorcycle to wall a little bit especially when you hit those bigger bumps geez louise people are freaking on it this morning i will admit i got up a little bit late this morning so there's a little bit of traffic uh, a little bit more traffic in comparison to our normal mc commute don't tell my boss but we're still getting it done it'll be delivered on time Let's hit the bump. Let's see how the suspension does. 
not horrendous. It definitely, you definitely feel the weight of this motorcycle, the almost nearly 500 pounds, 493 pounds. Honestly, where you feel the weight the most is under acceleration. Off the line, off idle acceleration is quite good, uh, mainly because of that kind of direct drive feel. But you feel the weight as you get going. It just kind of feels like it's a little bit sluggish to get up to speed now that's not to say you don't have passing power and you do uh getting through traffic um getting through traffic and going by other vehicles on the road you do have passing power to work with but sometimes it feels a little bit sluggish another thing i wanted to comment on about the dct is that it's it's improvements over the years i've actually been uh, very impressed with the DCT, namely its predictability uh, in shifting. It honestly, sometimes, sometimes when you're cruising, shifts a little bit sooner than I might, and just kind of lugs it around. But you can also switch uh, via these three riding modes. Now we're in sport, which will change the shifting characteristics. Uh, of the DCT and then we also have a user setting which is fully customizable in power delivery and traction control and engine braking um, and then you have a standard and you have a sport now we're in sport so uh, back to it the predictability of the DCT system has vastly improved over early systems um, and honestly kind of shifts where you feel like you usually might and takes that worry out of your head. Now there were some times in my testing that, you know, sometimes you would throw a back shift uh, in the middle of a corner while I'm at lean, which is no problem uh, because it does it relatively smoothly and, and, and really works to not upset the chassis. Um, now with other DCT systems, namely on the African Twin, I believe it is, uh, it actually utilizes an IMU, an inertial measurement unit, which takes into account lean angle, roll, yaw, uh, all of those measurements and will better calculate those shifts for you. Not necessarily on the NC750, but kind of something cool uh, to point out. So we are cruising along Interstate 5 headed to the motorcyclist offices in top gear, six gear, cruising about 4,000 RPM, relatively smooth, very comfortable. Um, you can see down here in the lower left of my LCD display, the uh, calculator aboard this motorcycle calls for about 53.4 miles to the gallon average. I've seen a little bit higher than that, about 55. Uh, I even had a tank that was about 58. Now, if you're whaling on it, obviously that'll go down a little bit. Um, pair mid 50s with a 3.8 gallon fuel tank and you're going to get 150 175 miles to a tank uh, which is nice i uh, i can appreciate that another thing to point out would be this short ish uh windscreen equipped to the nc750 that is notably non-adjustable um, now, I feel like it's a pretty smooth pocket of air below, uh, below this threshold, but then I kind of get some turbulent air going around my head. If I pop up, it actually kind of settles down. Uh, it settles down and, and is actually quite a bit smoother. So if it were my motorcycle, I'd probably invest, get an aftermarket windscreen that's a little bit taller. Maybe Honda will come out with that in the coming years um, and just make it a little bit more comfortable mirrors super stable super uh gives you a super clean image of what's going on behind you and i don't know quite nice Jeez louise this little poke in this nissan sentra is ruining our last little turnaround to test the chassis of this motorcycle i can see him up there all over his phone driving down the road mc commute viewers we ask you to look out for fellow motorcyclists out on the road 
This thing does haul butt when it's in its sport mode. A little bit more aggressive uh, throttle response and the shifting uh, parameters are a little bit different that allow you to kind of wind it out. That's also kind of rad about the DCTs. You get to balance a little bit more, uh, not put your feet down and try and work that clutch. Kind of neat. I don't know. One thing I did want to comment on with the NC750 is we call it a utilitarian, we call it a versatile, we call it sort of a do-it-all machine. You could totally uh, use this for the daily commute, take it on an adventure. Um, I know that some owners are even taking these things off-road, which is pretty awesome as well. Now, I think that some people could say, well, we don't have cruise control, we don't have heated grips, we don't have this or that. But honestly, for the $9,299 price tag, what more could you really ask for? I think that you're already getting so many creature comforts. Uh, you're already getting a pretty awesome, versatile machine that I don't want to say I'm going to be opposed to getting those creature comforts, but... I don't want to see the price tag increase. I think what this motorcycle is is already a pretty remarkable value. Time to get off our motorbike and finish up our MC commute. We're going to click this thing over into neutral right here, shut off the key, and that is it for our time aboard the NC750X. Now, to highlight our ride aboard this machine um, and the motorcycle itself, you have that 745cc uh, parallel twin platform that's really kind of tractor-like, really easy, manageable power, and specific to this model is the DCT transmission, that dual clutch transmission that gets rid of the need of a clutch lever, a shift lever, um, and really kind of lends itself to... Uh, I don't want to say a peace of mind, but it takes a little bit of uh, mental capacity away from needing to ride this motorcycle, um, which, like I said, maybe go get groceries, maybe I have done that, maybe I haven't, can neither confirm nor deny, but I love the DCT transmission specifically on models like this and like the Goldwing as well. You have a very neutral handling chassis despite it being 493 pounds with that 3.8 gallon fuel tank fully fueled. Um, otherwise, you have the storage, the internal storage. Now, these hard bags are actually an option from Honda themselves that is not fitted standard to the NC750. Now, all that being said, this is a wicked good motorcycle if you're looking for something that's kind of do-it-all, versatile. There's... There's not many other motorcycles with the capability, the flexibility, um, and kind of smooth running performance all in one as the NC750. And I really believe it's kind of overlooked as a model uh, by a lot of people, and it deserves a lot of credit. Maybe if you get to a, a showroom, throw a leg over, see if it's something that might fit you, or even get a test ride when they come to town. I think you guys will be pretty impressed. So that's it for our time aboard the 2021 Honda NC750X. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you enjoyed the ride with me. If you did, give us a like, comment. We want to hear from you and subscribe to the Motorcyclist YouTube channel. Head over to MotorcyclistOnline.com to read the full story and we'll see you guys next time.